So it's the last week of April and uh, our new package has been settled in for a couple of weeks now and our three overwintered colonies are thriving. They're building their population quickly. So it's important to make sure that we have our veromite population under control. So today we're going to do what's called a powdered sugar roll and that way we can judge how many mites we have in our hives and whether or not we need to treat the hives before the mite population gets too large. Uh, mites cause a variety of issues. They are to honeybees what ticks are to humans. They um, bite through the bees exoskeleton and feed on their hemolymph which is bee blood and that in and of itself does not kill the bees but the Varroa mites carry a variety of bacteria and viruses that can affect the bees. Um, we have actually another one of the hives a friend of mine has is currently experiencing sac brood and that may or may not have come from Varroa, probably not. That actually can come from uh, interacting with other bees that are infected. Uh, but in any case, we're going to treat for mites if our population is too high to try to keep them in check. The first hive that we're going to treat today is our new package that we just installed a couple of weeks ago. I've taken the um, feeder jars off uh, just to kind of accelerate how quickly the video I can put the video together um, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, getting bees out of the hive getting them into uh, a jar uh, and then doing the actual sugar roll and I'll explain each piece as I go along So when you're performing a sugar roll, what you'd like to do is you'd like to find frames that have open and capped brood, mostly open, but a combination of open and capped brood. The more open, the better. Um, if you have open brood, that's where you're gonna find more mites because the mites go into those cells to lay their eggs. So we're gonna start off actually first by pulling out some frames and looking for brood. This frame is mostly honey, so that's not really a good candidate for sugar roll. Oh, a drone. Okay, there's a little capped brood. Oh, and there's some open brood on this frame. Okay, we also want to make sure that our queen isn't on the frame that we're going to sugar roll uh, because we don't want to risk injuring her, damaging her. The queen in this hive is marked with a white dot on her thorax. Um, she's clearly not on this frame. So this frame is one possible frame for sugar rolling. There's not very much open brood, but there is some. This one has a lot of capped brood, eggs. So the queen has been here within the last couple of days. There she is, there's the queen, right on that frame, right in the middle of it. So we don't wanna use this frame because we don't wanna accidentally injure our queen. So we're just gonna put this frame right back in.
This one has lots of capped brood and it also has some open brood. So this one is a possible. I'm going to put this one out here as well. The best brood for doing a sugar roll is drone brood. Now the reason for that is it takes between three and four days longer for drone pupae to emerge once they've been their cells have been capped and the mites know that and so they go into those cells because they have longer to uh, reproduce during that cell being capped this frame has lots of capped brood but it doesn't appear to have much in the way of open brood so this isn't really good going to be a good frame for sugar roll This one also has lots of capped brood. Uh, there's some open brood on this one as well, actually. So this one actually would be a decent one for a, a roll. So I think we've found enough frames that we can use now. Um, actually, I'm thinking that frame I just looked at is probably the best of the, of the lot because it has the most open. So I'm going to get the bees now and get them in this bucket. Now I'm going to put a lot of bees in the air when I do this. It just happens automatically when you do this because what you have to do is you have to shake the frame and knock the bees down into that bucket. And in the act of doing that, the bees that are flyers are going to want to fly away. The nurse bees that are young that can't fly yet, those are mostly going to fall into the bucket and stay there. And so I am going to Take those bees down into that bucket. A lot of them will fly, but the ones that go into the bucket are the ones that we're going to use for our sugar roll. Mm. Now, you'll notice on this cup I've got a line drawn that is about a um, hundred milliliters and a hundred milliliters roughly is equates to 300 bees and 300 bees is what you want in your sample so we're going to shake them down and then we're going to scoop them up into our cup get them up to about that line and then we'll jump them into our little jar that we have here and then put the cover on and they're not real happy with me right now because they don't like when you do that. The ones that uh, we didn't scoop out, we're just going to dump them back in here. We don't need them. So we're going to need this bucket while we're doing the sugar rolls. So, all right, got all the bees out of it. And we have our jar with about roughly 300 bees inside of it. Okay, so we've got our jar of about 300 bees, and then I've got my hive tool, and I've got my regular old powder sugar. So what you do is you take a couple of scoops using your hive tool, and you dump it right on top of the screen here. Oh, in case I didn't show you that before, there's a screen on the top of the jar. It's number eight hardware cloth. And so you want to get those two scoops of sugar as much of that as you can inside with the bees and then we just roll the jar grad gently but you want to do this for at least a minute a full minute the goal here is to coat every single bee with powdered sugar uh, for some reason varroa mites do not like powdered sugar and when a bee gets covered with powdered sugar, this bee that's not in the jar is kind of interested in what I'm doing here. Uh, they, they don't like the powdered sugar and when they get coated with it they let go of the bee if they're latched onto the bee. And so that's how we get a count of how many varroa mites there are on these 300 bees is by getting every bee coated as much as possible. So 
so that the mites will let go of the bees that they're latched onto. So I don't know how well you can see that, but the bees are pretty well coated now. And so, so now that I've got them pretty well coated, I'm just going to set this down. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but I'm quite a ways away from where the hives are at this point. The idea behind that is these bees are not happy with me. They're releasing alarm pheromone, and if you were near the hives, it would uh, more than likely get the other bees riled up. So we don't want that. So that's why I moved away. So I'm just going to set this down for a few minutes, and then uh, we'll let the powdered sugar do its thing, and then hopefully we'll find out if there are mites in here. Okay, so we've let our jar of bees with their powdered sugar sit for about five minutes. And at this point, we're going to use the same bucket that I dumped them into earlier. And I'm going to invert the jar and start shaking it like I'm sh shaking salt out of a salt shaker. You're trying to get as much of the powdered sugar that's in here to come out as you can. As you can imagine, the bees don't really like this. Again, you don't want to do this anywhere near the hive. They'll be releasing alarm pheromone while I'm doing this, and they would get any of their sisters excited if we were over by the hive. So now I'm going to set this jar back down and let, it, let them calm down for a couple more minutes. All right, they've been sitting for a couple minutes, and as you can see, they're all back down on the bottom. They're fairly relaxed now. So I'm going to take them back over. I'm going to take the, the top off the jar and I'm going to dump them right on top of the hive. I'll dump, dump them right on top of the frames and uh, they'll go back inside and their sisters will uh, help clean the sugar off of them. Okay, so we're just going to take the lid off the jar. First I'll tap it to knock the, well, I don't want to tap it too hard because that'll get them too excited. Oh, actually, some of the guard bees are coming out. They're already excited, so maybe there's still a little bit of alarm pheromone going on. We'll, we'll get a little smoke going here. Try to cover up the smell some. I probably didn't wait long enough. I, you can wait like five, five minutes if you want. And then you just dump the bees out. And uh, get as many of the stragglers out as you can. Oops. All right, so no more bees. Okay, so we've got no more bees left in here in the jar. Um, and actually, we can leave the lid off of the jar at this point since there's no bees inside. And we'll just take this bottle. I just have regular uh, tap water in it. We're gonna squirt some of this in here and try to dissolve uh, the powdered sugar that's left in the jar. Just swirl it around a bit try to get it to dissolve whatever's in the jar. And then dump that into this bucket with the other powdered sugar that we already shook off. All right. Now we'll just squirt a little bit more water in. And now what we're doing is we're just gonna swish this around. We're trying to dissolve all of the powdered sugar that's in here. And uh, once it dissolves, then we'll start looking at the different, the darker colored specks in here and see if any of them are mites. Here we have, uh, I don't know how well you can see that, there's a little dirt and stuff swishing around in there. Um, mites are kind of a reddish brown color, so you wanna look for things that are reddish brown co in color. And there's plenty of dirt in here that's reddish brown, and there's no substitute when you're trying to figure this out for your magnifying glass to try to help you decide whether something is a mite or just dirt. The key is, if it's got legs, it's not dirt. Dude, you're in my light. Sorry. 
and I am not finding any in here. Now, since this was a new package, oftentimes packages are treated before they're shipped. So it's possible that this new package that we got was treated uh, when it left the apiary that it came from in somewhere in California, and therefore it doesn't need to be treated because uh, that maybe was treated just a few weeks ago. So at this point, um, this hive is clean enough that we don't have to do anything more with it. I'm just gonna put the inner cover back on, put the feeder back on, close it up, and we're done with that hive for the day. So it's been about five minutes or so, and some of the bees still have powdered sugar on them, as you can see. Um, but notice that they're cleaning it off themselves, and their sisters are helping out too. It's just sugar after all, and that's what bees eat. So. Um, they'll just clean themselves off. I've been uh, doing sugar rolls with my bees for about five years and uh, I can honestly say I don't know that I've ever killed a single bee doing it. One of the, your alternatives for doing mite counts, mite checks, is uh, doing an alcohol wash. Um, you use a, a jar just like I did. You measure the bees out exactly like I did. The only difference is, is instead of putting powdered sugar through the screen, you pour isopropyl alcohol through. Uh, and then when you do that, it kills the bees um, and it also kills the mites. Um, especially since this is a new package, the last thing I want to do is kill any of its bees. So I prefer the powdered sugar roll for that reason.